Hey pretty babies, what is going on? Lee Sanders here, 411mania.com, columnist and reporter covering all things wrestling. Hey, you're checking out a new The RCWR Show, where we're always talking about the very latest in wrestling, entertainment, and beyond since 2011. And here we are once again, talking about, wow, women of wrestling. It is episode number 29 that we're talking about. Can you guys believe it? We began our return in covering, wow, women of wrestling many weeks ago. Specifically, we were covering lost episodes that never aired on Access TV, given the whole fiasco that had went down once Anthem Entertainment was the new owner of Access TV, and they just reshuffled a whole lot of things. But y'all that have been checking out my WoW recaps, reaction episodes, y'all know the whole history. Newer listeners, if that's something maybe you want me to Go down the rabbit hole again. You can always sound off in the comment section. Definitely let me know throughout social media. But here we are. We're talking about episode 29 of Women of Wrestling. And after this, we're down to the final three lost episodes of WOW. And then we're done at least until fall of 2022 when WOW comes back with all new episodes and i'm looking forward to it i'm also looking forward to sitting down with my brother in arms my buddy anthony missionary thomas from wrestling soup as it was fun the last rodeo covering some of these episodes that we were seeing play out before our eyes and everything it's gonna be nice this fall getting back on the saddle with him and covering all things women of wrestling so A lot to look forward to as far as the future goes. So, hey, we are fresh off of an explosive episode, episode 28, where Nikita Lyons, a.k.a. Faith the Lioness, was ultimately betrayed by Amber O'Neill. Man, did she put the wrong trust, the wrong faith in. I mean, she was thinking right. Don't get it wrong. She was thinking it right. What better way to really stick it to Lana Starr, Chrissy Vane, pretty much fight fire with fire. She had the right mindset, did Faith, the lioness, which was, hey, you've been hurt by Lana Starr. I've been hurt by Lana Starr. Look, we would make great allies as opposed to adversaries. We saw just how that pretty much blew up in lioness face and stemming off of that from last week's episode we talked about everything pretty much kicked off getting the recap of all that but we see faith the lioness immediately after the match was over she runs her way into her locker room and she is just in tears in tears as she's looking at herself in the mirror and i can just only imagine what she was probably thinking to herself as she was seeing herself in the mirror, which was, look what they did to me, I look ugly, I would imagine there was just this whole mixed range of emotions, just wide emotions at that, the anger, the fact that she was betrayed, just everything, and we see her calmly, it took her a minute, but she calmly regained her composure, And then she started messing around with her hair. She took a pair of scissors and then she just cut a little bit off here and there, tried to basically even it all up. And she she stopped crying and just looked herself in the mirror, nodded her head pretty much as if she was saying, you know what? It's all right. Everything's going to be all right. It, It is what it is. And that pretty much was the end right there. Now, I still can't help but wonder. And I got to put this out there to some of you guys. Do you think that this maybe is part of an elaborate plan to really stick it to Chrissy Vane and Lana Starr? Or did Faith Lioness go into this very naive and and thinking? Because, I mean, you just rewinded it back and you're thinking about how Amber O'Neill was just so... Man, the way she came off, she felt so hurt. She felt so betrayed. The way she was chasing after Chrissy Vane and Lana Starr for that hot little minute. And it almost, 
I mean, really, am I led to believe right now it's a it's a perfect case of if you can't beat them, join them? Is that really? I would like to believe that this is just all part of a elaborate scheme. I, I'm not trying to let loose of that, but if it turns out it's not a scheme and this was just all about putting the screws to lioness then wow it is all i have to say so keeping that in mind i just can't help but wonder okay if it turns out this isn't an elaborate scheme you're talking about three women against one faith lioness where could faith lioness possibly find allies to join in her worthy cause and trying to balance out the odds and really get the ultimate payback there against that team, Team Blondage at that. And what a night it was for Team Blondage on this episode of Wild Women of Wrestling. Ah, yeah, I'm just going down the roster and everything. I'm just really thinking about it. Is it potentially possible that maybe she could find allies in adrenaline and fire? I mean, that's one possibility right there. Or maybe she could find, oh, actually, now that I really, really stop and think about it, given the humiliation, how she essentially was bullied in the middle of the ring and everything, she would actually be a really good fit for the bully busters, Steffi Slays and Keita Rush, don't you all think? I believe, and look, these past several episodes that we've been seeing of these lost episodes, the Bully Busters have been a little bit ice cold as compared to the last run of episodes that we saw aired on Access TV. So that would actually be a really good smooth transition right there. So let me know. Let me know what you guys think and everything. I tell you what, though, I thought for sure that Faith was going to have something to do with the main event match of the night because the main event match consisted of the uh, team of Team Blondage uh, taking on Fire and Adrenaline for the Wild Tag Team Championship. And I thought for sure Faith Alliance was going to get involved in that matchup, but she did not. We'll talk more about that main event match in just a hot little bit. Meanwhile, we go to my girl, Jesse Bell, a.k.a. Jesse Jones. Jesse Jones is with... Uh, the uh, Dixie Darlings, and they pretty much send a message to the tag champions. Remember how the Dixie Darlings had <laughs> pretty much helped themselves to the champions' tag titles, and they brought them to Jesse Jones. Jones is wondering how the heck did they get these titles, and then she comes up with a really good idea. Well, now we see what that idea was and she pretty much laid it out for those of us at home but then she also reiterated the fact once her and the Dixie Darlings came down to the ring David McClain wondering what the heck is going on why are they holding on to the tag titles titles alone that don't even belong to them we find out Jesse Jones's scheme is quite simple hey they have these tag titles and if the tag champions want them back, they'd be more than happy to give it back to them. But in return, they have to give them a title shot opportunity. So they reiterated this again in the middle of the ring. David McClain, he pretty much let it be known. He does not negotiate with terrorists. He does not negotiate with people that just be scheming, manipulating. He, he really was not trying to cave in to Jesse Jones' demands, if you will, because that's pretty much what it was. But what McClain did say to Jesse Jones is, hey, I can kind of meet you halfway. Tell you what, I'll entertain that idea so long as you do the right thing and you return those tag titles so that I can properly give them back to the people those actually belong to. So give me those titles and then we'll talk about it. So Jesse Jones did relinquish the tag titles. David McClain appreciated the fact that Jesse was pretty much a woman of her word. And as a result of that, he met her halfway. He told her straight up, look, I'll give you an opportunity here. You want to try to get a shot at the tag titles? 
I'm going to present an opportunity to you. This next team that's getting ready to come out, face them, because these guys are pretty much next in line to take on the tag champions. But if you can dethrone these guys, then that spot will go to you and you'll be next up to take on the wild tag champions. Those people that they had to face was Chantilly Chella and Sassy Massey. Did uh, Jesse Jones. Jesse Jones decided she was going to team up with Jolene of the Dixie Darlings for this one here. Uh, pretty good tag match for what it was worth. Final moments uh, going into the end here. Uh, we saw Chella. She decides to do this great tag team uh, double maneuver with help from uh, Sassy Massey to basically she picked up Sassy Massey and pretty much crashed her on the back of who we thought is Jolene. And I like how the commentators just the entire time, especially David McLean, is that Jolene or is that Jolene? Which which twin is that? And they're assuming that's Jolene uh, that's in there. Chella goes for the cover after getting help from Sassy. It is a near fall as supposedly Jolene kicks out. Jolene, well, after she kicks out, she rolls herself outside of the ring, goes crashing onto the canvas, where lying on the ground conveniently is the other twin. And so they're doing a little, you already know what time it is. They're doing a little bit of a switcheroo right here. Chella gives chase, and as she's trying to give chase, what she does not see is uh, Jesse Jones getting up on the apron to distract the referee. Sassy kind of realizing what's going on here, but she's not able to get the ref's attention. So outside, we see Chella. She thinks she's grabbing Jolene puts her back in the ring. Once she gets in there, she's looking for a spinning kick, which she misses. And this twin, maybe this was actually Jolene, and the other one was Jolene. We, we, just, we just don't know. But uh, she missed that spinning kick, did uh, Chantilly Chella, as uh, this twin pretty much countered set her up for a DDT and then went into an arm bar and it was a submission victory for Jesse Jones and for, I'll just say, the Dixie Darlings. So they have automatically now slid into the position where they got dibs on the tag champions. So it, it, was, a, it was a good matchup there, but you know, we have seen a case right here these past couple of weeks where David McClain and crew, everybody is confused as far as which twin is this? Who is this? Which one? And I just can't help but wonder as we now are going into these final three episodes, well, are we going to get to a point right here where we go on ahead and we take some type of paint sticker or something so that, okay, this is that twin and this is that twin. Are we maybe going to get to a scenario like that? Or because sooner or later, you would like to believe that whoever the opponents are, that's going to be facing them. Whether it's going to be this upcoming tag match or just in general, you would just like to believe that, okay, we got to wise up here. How can we really nip this in the bud so that there's no more further discrepancies looking at you David McClain wink 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 in storyline you just can't help but wonder how much longer this is going to continue to play itself out and honestly that would be an interesting running gag in itself okay we've got the twins mark so we know that this is because I put paint on the arm of this one and the other one is you know, but then it turns out, no, you actually put paint on. If they could somehow figure out how to do that in a way where it's a nice running gag, that would be most welcome. I think it would be kind of refreshing. So I'm curious to see how this is going to play itself out over these next couple of episodes. I still find it rather interesting that Jesse Jones, who pretty much told Amber O'Neill, look, this whole tag team thing, it's obvious it's not working now. When you figure out what you want to do, give me a holler. And she says she wants to get back to making wrestling great again. And you just kind of had that impression she was just going to 
go down that singles path and try to eventually fight her way to a championship opportunity, but instead mixing it up there in the tag division uh, some more. I don't have a problem with it. I, it just kind of felt a little bit confusing is my whole point. But to see Jesse Jones in this position where she's essentially helping out the Dixie Darlings, I actually welcome it. I actually welcome it. Mixing in the the old school with the new school, I got no problem with it whatsoever. But, yeah, so we're going to be seeing them at a future date going up against the Wild Tag Champions. Next up, Malaya Hasaka of Exile taking on Kylie Ray. Exodus and Genesis are at ringside, so you pretty much knew what time it was right here. You just knew it was going to be all about the Mighty Numbers game. And I find it so hilarious because for two matches back to back, we dealt with, I'm trying to think if it went down. Actually, bear with me a second here. Bear with me a second here. I think it was these two matches. I'm almost pretty sure it was these two matches, if not the first three matches, because the same referee I had an issue with from the previous episode, like, damn, dude, you don't hear that loud crashing going on behind you. Remember that? I said, wow, this ref, and to help you guys out, to jog your memories a little better, it was the referee from the last episode who, oh, God, there was some type of a double team that was going on. I'm trying to, oh, I can't remember now. I did have it, but we talked about it vividly from the last episode. Just check it out, and you'll hear exactly what I had said. We have this referee yet again, and for basically two, if not three consecutive matches, it's like, dude, you got to get your ears checked. You just, come on, man. But the numbers game, once again, from Exile, was just too much for Cali Ray. You had Malaya Hasaka once again, and conveniently with the same referee. Oh, my head. Oh, 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 my head. It hurts so much. And the referee is trying to figure out what's going on there. Meanwhile, Genesis and Exodus, they pretty much do a double team. They pretty much spiked Callie's head to the canvas, basically. You're going, damn, Ruff, you don't hear all that loud thumping that's going on behind you? What, what the hell, man? You're that in the zone? What what, what, what the hell? I, I just found it to be so damn comical, quite honestly. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Right? It, it's just, ah, uh, it, it was nerve-wracking. It, it was just nerve-wracking. Out of the matches that we got for this week's episode, I would have to say that this Malaya Hasaka taking on Kali Ray match, I I would say this was probably one match I honestly could have done without. I wish there was something else in there that could have taken its place because to do the same thing, you know, back to back episodes with Malaya Hasaka there, I, I wasn't really a, a a fan of that whatsoever. If Malaya Hasaka, see here's the, here's the here's the big thing that I don't understand. If in storyline, you've got Malaya Hosako, who is this in-ring veteran. She's got all this great experience and, and all that, right? Okay, then to go up against a girl such as Callie Ray, and look, not for nothing, the way the match was booked, Callie Ray looked kind of decently strong here. She looked at many times as though she was going to have Hosako's number. And so you can kind of, to a degree, justify why you had Exodus and Genesis interfere when they did. But if you've noticed during these past couple of Lost episodes, it feels as though Exile has taken a little bit of a backseat as far as everything else that's been going on, specifically in the tag division here. You know, it's gotten pretty ice cold. We have not seen them. Hey. Don't think that we're not noticing what's going on here. You know, we've yet to get that title shot opportunity, and we're not going to stop until we get that tag title opportunity. You know, we're going to continue to run havoc here, and we're going to continue to do so until we ultimately become the new Wild Tag Champions. 
you know, they, they've backed off of that. So hopefully in these final couple of episodes that's going to go down, we're going to see them get back to basics and finally, you know, try to uh, get their opportunity there. But I, I've just found that to be kind of interesting what's been happening. But we got to pause on this whole, oh, my head, oh, all the back of my neck. We, we got to pause on that already, man. Seriously, we got to start seeing the refs here get a little bit more wised up. From there, Siren, the voodoo doll, went up against Razor of the Psycho Sisters. We learned from a package, and it was reiterated by David McClain during the entrances that, uh, who was it, Razor of the Psycho Sisters, she got burnt in the face from everything that stemmed from the previous episode. So as a result of that, she's pretty much out uh, at this time. So... You know, no telling what's uh, what's her status, you know, when she's going to come back, if at all, and everything. So taking up the mantle, trying to represent Razor was uh, Fury. Yeah, you know what? I think I said Siren the Voodoo Dow versus uh, Razor, did I not? No, I, I meant to say uh, Fury. It was actually Fury that was in action. Razor actually was the one that got burnt in the face. So she's... She's done for for now, and you know that that, that kind of sucks, man. Cause I, I like me some, I got I like me some razor, man. Razor's a cute little thing. All those girls, uh, for the Psycho Sisters, all those girls are fucking badass. But look, if uh, if yours truly was a bachelor, and I just happened to uh, arrive at a bar, and I had to take my pick on, uh, you know, which three. Of the three, which one I would, you know, go mingle, have some drinks with. I got to go with Razor. I got to go with Razor. I'll go with Razor first. I'll go with Fury second. Mesmeriah would be third. Uh, actually, not. it's a close one between Mesmeriah and uh, Fury for uh, number two, for me personally. It's, it's a close one there. It's a close one for number two. It's a close one for number two. But uh, anyway, anyway. Anyway, so this match, for what it was worth, you know, nice little back and forth. Uh, this was kind of a, a I don't want to say a test of strength, but it kind of came off that way. It kind of came off as a test of strength, uh, a test of athleticism, somewhat of a test of brutality. It kind of came off that way. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm just playing the match back in my head and everything. It was almost a tick-for-tat type of match, the way this had played out. No decisive victor came out of this one, unfortunately. I remember in the closing moments for this matchup, uh, Fury, yeah, Fury had Siren the Voodoo Doll in a pen. Kind of looked as though maybe she was going to get the three count. Next thing you know, Princess Aussie and Holly did. They just yanked, yanked Fury uh, out of there from in between the ropes. And, and they just started beating her down and everything. Chaos just started erupting. Action gets back inside the ring and everything. Uh, Holly did actually pulled out a pair of handcuffs and she was trying to do some, some devious stuff with those handcuffs when all of a sudden person might be new to you guys, depending on when you started watching women of wrestling, but this person was definitely new to me and everything. Uh, we saw the return of spike spike apparently was, uh, a original psycho sister. And so she came back. I think she had a bat in her hand. The girls just pretty much fled the scene. So automatically you're looking at this girl that's called Spike and you're going. Now, let me explain for those of you that haven't seen this episode yet. And you want me to try to describe how Spike looks. Put Luna Vachon and Ruby Soho in a blender. And you'll pretty much get Spike. Spike is otherwise known as uh, Hudson Envy. Hudson Envy. 
And not for nothing, but when you look up her resume, she's faced some pretty good opponents. She, in her own respect, it right, has been a journeyman. She's been wrestling since 2012. She wrestled for a good minute in Japan. Uh, she has wrestled a lot in the state. She has wrestled for IWA, Mid-South, uh, Shimmer. She's also wrestled for QOC. Uh, she's also done some work for AAW. And I was looking as far as in the U.S. territories where we're all. I know for a good minute she was doing some stuff early on in her career uh, in California before she started really focusing on Tokyo. But then pretty much ongoing main meat and potatoes has been in the USA. She has wrestled in Illinois, uh, Ohio. Tennessee, Virginia, um, I'm trying to, Connecticut, um, so uh, North Carolina. Some of the women that she's faced uh, so far in her respected career, it's a pretty good resume. She's faced Lufisto. She had a nice back and forth with Sue Young. Not to mention she went up against Deanna Perrazzo. So she's she's gone up against some some pretty good opponents. She's age 31, going on 32. So I've seen a little bit of her matches and she's got the appearance down. When you see her, you just go, "Okay, this woman is a badass. This woman can kick some mega freaking. Oh, she looked like she's going to she's got that whole tough look. I'm going to kick your ass. She's got that whole persona down. She looks like somebody you do not want to mess with. Now, when it's time to see her do her thing in the ring, I'm going to be brutally honest with you guys. I'm going to be brutally honest with you guys. When it comes to her in-ring ability, it is basic, basic, basic. I do mean basic. She is pretty much a grounded game type of wrestler uh, you know 90 percent of her offense it's all mat based it's all about the strikes it's all about some kicks you know maybe you'll see a back suplex you know maybe you'll see a, a you know a back breaker you know knee to the back maybe you'll see some stuff like that but as far as the way she wrestles to me the way she wrestles and I look not for nothing. I looked at her most recent stuff and I just was going, hmm. Um, it's very, very basic. Hey, I just got my certificate from this wrestling training school academy. Oh, hey, that's great. Okay, well, I need you to go do a four minute match over here. Okay, great. Yeah, I got it. You know, um, yeah. I mean, got the look. The look is perfect, but the in ring, it, it, you know, I'll be honest, you get a little bit bored after a, a couple of minutes. And I found myself going through, you know, just to prepare myself and talking about here on this episode with you, you guys this week. I, I looked up her matches and it was just, mm, uh, uh, okay. Even the stuff with Lefisto, and I love Lefisto. I love Lefisto. But even the stuff with Lefisto, it was like, meh, uh, okay. I think where she really gets her shine the most is when it is when she's in some type of a hardcore or a death style type of match because she is that woman that will, oh, you want me to do this and, and we're gonna draw blood in the pro oh yeah, sign me the hell up. I'll do that crazy. <laughs> Yeah, right. You know, um, that's where she really shines. That's where she is, I, I think, really buzzworthy and everything. So as far as her being part of the whole Psycho Sisters, given everything that I've seen of her leading up to her doing her thing with the Psycho Sisters again, it's a good fit. It's a good fit. So as long as she's being utilized in a, a violence capacity like the ultimate violence you you guys dig where i'm coming from um i i just i think for these last little bit of episodes that we're going to be seeing 
You know, if we're talking about just a regular one-on-one matchup and everything, I, you know, look, wow, that's the thing we got to give wow a lot of credit for. They can make anybody look rather decent to good because, I mean, they're pretty much in post-productions. Okay, let's cut this and let's just, you know, segue to this. All right, we'll, we'll blend this sequence into this. Yeah, cut that, go into this in the cut. So, I mean, they're going to do a good job editing and everything, but if you really want to get a good idea what Spike, a.k.a. Hudson Envy, is all about, I highly would suggest you YouTube or Daily Motion, and you can just see in its entirety. You guys will see exactly what I'm talking about, and I think many of you guys will definitely agree with me. You know, is it possible that her game can go to another level? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I really don't know right now. I, I wish I could be totally honest. Well, I am being honest, but I wish it was a case where, honestly, I could be here and say, yeah, I could see it. But, I mean, anything's possible. I mean, she's still pretty young. Anything can happen. Now, I, it really just depends on how serious she is about continuing on as a professional wrestler, because not for nothing again, in preparation, cause you know me, something kind of, Oh, let me research that. She has not wrestled since 2019. The last little bit of stuff that she did was the wild tapings. And she did a shimmer event. I think there might've been one other event outside of those that she did, but since 2019, she has not done anything. She doesn't have a Twitter account anymore. She still has, her Facebook page, but she hasn't been active on her Facebook page since 2019. So maybe the pandemic kind of, and she just, I I don't know what's going on, but you know, hopefully, you know, for those of you that might be fans of her work and everything, hopefully she's going to be getting back on the saddle again. Uh, Hopefully this year, I mean, a lot of wrestlers just looking at the wrestling industry in general, When it comes to this particular year alone, it's pretty much, okay, it's back to basics. Let's go ahead. Let's let's do this already. But to see her return to the Psycho Sisters, I think it's a great uh, addition uh, as far as, you know, hey, we don't have Razor right now. Uh, A lot of people were saying in some of the reviews about Spike, you know, they were saying they've never heard her talk and. I saw some of the people just react to her in-ring ability and everything. It's going to be interesting to see. You know we're definitely going to be hearing from Spike during these last couple of episodes. So we're going to have a, a little bit of an idea where she is on her mic work. I sadly did not go that deep in my research on, well, how is she on promos? I pretty much was just looking at, okay, what can she do in the ring-wise? So from there... Our main event match of the night, Amber O'Neal and Chrissy Vane teaming up to take on the uh, Wild Tag Team Champions in Fire and Adrenaline as it was a tag team championship match. Um, I I love this episode overall, I I gotta say. Got your mix of singles matches, you got some love in there for tag matches. Now, David McClain and crew, as they were going over this main event match, They did say that they got word finally about the status of Jungle Girl. They said that she is back home in Virginia. And uh, they said that as far as, uh, you know, what's going to happen with the championship match opportunity, they're they're pretty much saying, because they tease it, they said that Tessa Blanchard and Serpentine were supposed to go at it to try to figure out who was going to go on to face the Beast for the championship. However, David McClain mentioned, well, let's not forget Jungle Girl is still in the mix as well. You know, if she can, you know, get back here and, you know, she still has a ticket to cash in, uh, as they mentioned that, you know, she's at home in Virginia. So as far as what exactly, you know, just the fact that they mentioned her, you're going, okay, all right, great. So it's going to be interesting to see how everything pans out for these final three episodes. But Amber O'Neill, Chrissy Vane taking on the tag champions. I thought for sure Faith the Lioness, a.k.a. Nikita Lyons, was going to get involved in this. She did not. 
the match itself, I found it to be comical at times because whenever Chrissy Vane was tagged in, first of all, the fact that they were doing a rock, paper, scissors shoot to try to figure out who was going to kick things off in the match, I'm talking about for Team Blondage there, that was hilarious in itself. The tag champions, they're just ready to kick ass. They're ready to go and everything. I thought that was pretty comical, though, how everything began. And then whenever Chrissy Vane was in there, you know, she, you know, she obviously, <laughs> yeah, at one point, yeah, Chrissy Vane, I think it was on adrenaline. She's just spinning her around, just round, 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 round. And then she ends up doing a, uh, a backbreaker and then she just falls on the ground and she's pretty much surf suffering there from, you know, vertigo or whatever. And uh, as she tries to go for a tag, she inadvertently tags the referee. And then she's trying to struggle, get her bear. You know, she's struggling getting her bearings together while she tries to actually go in her respective corner to tag in Amber O'Neill. There was a lot of comedic stuff that was going on in this one. Chrissy Vane was bumping like a mofo throughout this match. The whole dynamic, though, it changed drastically when Amber O'Neill was tagged in because when Amber O'Neill was tagged in, you know, okay, she's actually going in there and she's actually, you know, wrestling. She's she's very sound and, and, and mindful and, you know, she's going in there. So it, it was interesting seeing these girls <laughs> just go in there and they're, they're trying to do their best to coexist and taking on fire and adrenaline here. Uh, but yeah, I thought that it was amazing that there was no Faith the Lioness that you know made an appearance in this one, because uh, it it would have been interesting to see her. But I I guess the way that they wanted to book this matchup, because first of all, I thought it was just so weird that just all of a sudden these girls, wait a minute, they're number one contenders and they get to take on like are are we are we sure about that? Like are are we really? Yeah, it was kind of baffling right there. Decent tag match. Tag champions retaining their titles. I mean, you never really felt as though the tag titles were in jeopardy, quite honestly, because you figured either the tag champions were going to retain or there was going to be some type of interference. But either way, tag champions were going to retain regardless. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, hopefully we're going to see something come about here where exile you know their their dance with the tag champions hopefully we're going to see that eventually in these final three episodes but let's not also forget fire and adrenaline although they won this match they got a serious challenge coming at them i don't know if it's going to plan out uh, play itself out on the next episode or what but they're soon going to be taking on jesse jones and the dixie darlings there so that is going to be a very, very interesting, interesting matchup right there. A very interesting matchup. If I were to make a prediction right now, man, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. I am going to go on ahead and I'm going to say new tag champions will get crowned. I'm going to say new tag champions are going to get crowned. I would be shocked to see fire and adrenaline come out of these last handful of episodes still the WoW Women's uh, Tag Champions. I personally would. By the way, great tag team chemistry between fire and adrenaline. And as we all know, they are a couple in real life and everything. So, you know, when you have that type of a connection. Yeah, you guys are going to do a phenomenal job in really bouncing off of each other. David McLean and crew, you got to give them a lot of freaking credit, man, because they really freaking properly utilized the, you know, the, the core strengths of a lot of these girls. Whatever their weaknesses were, they did a really good job in masking it and then focusing on the strong traits and developing that, enhancing that, and in the process, everything else, even what might have been flaws, you know, um, were no longer flaws in due time. You know, and I think the greatest example of that is when you look at how Fire was initially, and, you know, very, very quiet, 
didn't really sound that confident in her in her promos. You know, you you know, you heard the words, but you didn't really feel the <clears throat> you know behind it and everything. And you know, now you fast forward and she is just it's a one eighty and everything. Um, I remember briefly there where we had Kira Hogan, aka Fire. You know, she's still off and on in AEW. Adrenaline as well. And, you know, if I'm Tony Khan, I, I just can't help but go, well, man, wait a minute. Look at this great blueprint that Wild Women of Wrestling's David McClain had did over here. Okay, maybe I need to just, let me borrow that. And it's like night and day. It's like night and day. You know, if I'm seeing something that's working, I'm I'm going to capitalize and I'm going to put my own stamp on it, but to each its own. But um, yeah, I've, I've really been enjoying them as a tag team, and, and wow, they've been a, a a very good, a very good tag team of all the tag teams that's there for a while. Definitely one of my uh, top three absolute favorites. My they're my number one. Although I wish we could have a little bit more of uh, story arcs with them, right? That's why I kind of like what's going on with them, Jesse Jones, and the Dixie Darlings right now. So that, that's keeping me very entertained. My number two, of course, I got to go with the Psycho Sisters, everything that's going on with the Psycho Sisters. But I, I need I need to have my Razor back, man. Come on now. I got to have my Razor back. Hopefully Razor will show up during these final three episodes. We'll wait and see. But... Other than one match I could have done without for the four episodes we have for this week, for this respected episode, episode 29, I, I, I thought it was a not too shabby uh, episode, all, all things considered, man. So a lot to look forward to as we get ready to go into these. Uh, again, these I, I'm not saying it just to be saying it, but you know this is pretty much it. We got three more episodes to go, and then that is going to be it, y'all. So, uh, hey, look, if you made it up to this point, do me a huge favor. If you have not done so already, make sure you hit that like button. When you do that, you really help supercharge content like this and make it be more accessible for folks to check out. I'm looking at you guys specifically on YouTube. I can't tell you when you like the videos on YouTube, it really helps out big time. It supercharges the heck out of the content in a way where it makes it more discoverable for other folks to check out. If you like Wild Women of Wrestling, you like supporting women's wrestling, you definitely only takes two seconds. Hit that like and uh, you're, you're definitely doing your part. Also, feel free to subscribe as well so you never miss out on future content that comes your way on a weekly basis. So we got another show in the books. If you have not done so already, piggy on back. Check out this week's RCWR show covering NWA Fallout from the uh, Crockett Cup weekend. It was a pretty good, strong episode. Check that out. You can also check out uh, Wednesday's RCWR show where we went all over the place talking about this week's AEW Dynamite, NXT, a little bit of wrestling headlines, non-wrestling related news. Uh, you got Monday's show that's available as well. And if you're not down with the webcast version of the shows, you can always check them out in audio format available wherever you get your podcast. Just search the RCWR show. That is going to do it on that note. We are on break as your next episode of the RCWR show will be coming at you guys on Monday, March 28th. We'll be on at 11, 10 p.m. Eastern after WWE Raw Goes off the air. WrestleMania week, man. We are pretty much, this is it. It's WrestleMania week coming up. So looking forward to it. It's going to be pretty exciting. Hey, you can get at me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Use the keywords, the RCWR show. And until next go round, my pretty babies, I'm wishing all of you all to be safe. And most importantly, be kind to one another. You all take care.